millions of people and making them feel connected. That's astonishing. <laughs> What's not to like? Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. This week on Arizona Horizon, join Ted Simons for in-depth discussions on these topics and more. It's all this week. Watch Arizona Horizon, weeknights at 5.30 and 10 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Whitfield Nursery, proud to support Arizona PBS, a valley tradition since 1946. Over 200 acres of Arizona-grown trees, citrus, and palms. Complete custom design and installation, and Whitfield Nursery still does the digging. WhitfieldNursery.com. Greg Lawson, images of the earthly experience have been renewing and transforming interior spaces for 50 years. Artwork designed to energize your visual space can be viewed at Greg Lawson Galleries in Sedona or online at greglawson.com. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. I believed he was going to rape me. All eyes on Capitol Hill and an emotional testimony from the woman accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. I have never done this to her or to anyone. And an emotional response from Kavanaugh flatly denying any sexual assault allegations. Plus, Kavanaugh supporters and protesters spill out onto Capitol Hill amidst the growing debate over sexual assault reporting and the future of our judicial system. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Samantha Lomibau. And I'm John Cardinelli. Thank you for joining us. A historic day in the nation's capital with a lasting impact on our nation's justice system. One woman who accused Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault, Christine Blossie Ford, was questioned by an Arizona prosecutor in an open hearing. And Kavanaugh issued another series of d denials in an emotional testimony of his own. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling, and I thought that Brett was accidentally going to kill me. I convinced myself that because Brett did not rape me, I should just move on and just pretend that it didn't happen. I have been accused of acting out of partisan political motives. Those who say that do not know me. I am an independent person, and I am no one's pawn. I just wanted to tell you the, the first thing that struck me from your statement this morning was that you were terrified. And I just wanted to let you know I'm very sorry. Um, that's not right. What is the strongest memory you have? The uproarious laughter between the two and their having fun at my expense. With what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100%. So what you are telling us is this could not be a case of mistaken identity. Absolutely not. I was not at the party described by Dr. Ford. I am innocent of this charge. You may defeat me in the final vote, but you'll never get me to quit. Never. My family and my name have been totally and permanently destroyed by vicious and false additional accusations. It's an, it's an outrage that I was not allowed to come and immediately defend my name and say, I didn't do this and give you all this evidence. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. I cannot imagine what you and your family have gone through. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham, that you knew about it and you held it. Outside the hearing room, hundreds of protesters marched around the Capitol, holding rallies both against and supporting the Supreme Court nominee. We have team coverage from our Cronkite News Washington Bureau. I'm Imani Stevens. Outside of the Senate office buildings this morning, supporters of Judge Brett Kavanaugh were outnumbered, but they were no less passionate. As an Arizonan, I was proud to see that my longtime friend, Senator John Kyle, was the Sherpa for Judge Kavanaugh, 
And I'm also thrilled to now know that Senator Kyle will be on the floor of the United States Senate to vote yes on Judge Kavanaugh's confirmation. Our other senator, Senator Jeff Flake, will be a yes vote. Flake is a member of the Judiciary Committee that heard today from Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford, one of the women who has accused him. While the senators weighed the evidence, many of Kavanaugh's supporters questioned the timing of their claims. The allegations made against Judge Kavanaugh's character from over 30 years ago have not been corroborated. There's no substantiation of these allegations. We'll find out today if there's more proof. All of a sudden, at the 11th hour, a Hail Mary gets thrown. You have to be skeptical of that. Laura, who did not give her last name, got into a spirited but respectful debate with Ford supporter Bianca Shaw. I am here to give Christine support, though because any woman that has experienced any level of trauma, again, I cannot take her truth away from her. If she's saying that she experienced this, she should be given the right as she is now. They agreed on a lot. Her values are actually are the more aligned. And Laura said she wants to hear today's to testimony truth, before completely making up her mind. Something was presented today that really shows and proves that he did this. I would be 100% behind that and I would completely withdraw any support that I've had up until this point for him. Right now, I don't see that happening. Kathy Harrod doesn't see it happening either and urged the Senate to act. The country, I say no more delays. Confirm Kavanaugh, vote. In Washington, Imani Stevens, Cronkite News. In front of the Supreme Court, where thousands of protesters are continued to gather in support of Dr. Christine Ford, who has accused Judge Brett Kavanaugh of sexually assaulting her back in 1982. They started at the Supreme Court and marched to the Senate office buildings, where Kavanaugh and Ford were telling their stories to the Senate Judiciary Committee. But the protesters in this largely female crowd appear to have already made up their mind. It is beyond comprehension that the U.S. Senate will confirm a man who has allegations of being a sexual assault, assaulter, a man who's been alleged to be a rapist without a thorough investigation. That sentiment, that Republicans are rushing hearings when a full investigation is called for, was common in the crowd. Others worried about the message that would be sent if Kavanaugh is approved in light of the allegations. They're basically saying that what happened to my friends, what happened to some of the closest people I know is okay. And it's sort of validating that in a sense. And I think that validation speaks volumes to our country. Allegations aside, just as many of these marchers said they were worried about Kavanaugh's judicial record and what the addition of another conservative justice would mean to the Supreme Court. We see which way we're going right now in this country, and we, sh we sh have a right. This is a real fear. We have a right to be afraid. Hafner says she, too, is worried about Kavanaugh's judicial record. But that's not the main reason she came out to add her voice to the opposition. And I'm very worried about the court changing its commitment to women's rights, to immigrants' rights, to LGBT rights. But this isn't about ideology. This is about stopping a predator. Ian Solomon, Cronkite News. The Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to make a final decision on whether they will vote on Kavanaugh's confirmation tomorrow morning. Governors of several states are pushing their congressional leaders to delay that vote. But if Kavanaugh is voted through by the Senate Judiciary Committee tomorrow, then his confirmation would proceed to a vote before the full Senate. At that point, Kavanaugh would only need a simple majority vote to take a lifetime appointment with the U.S. Supreme Court. One major question across the country and here in Arizona, how would these Kavanaugh proceedings affect the reporting of sexual assault allegations? Arizona Senator Jeff Flake says the events of the last week have completely dehumanized both Kavanaugh and his accusers. I spoke with one expert on the impact. With the sexual trauma, there's shame. Um, there's a fear of um, not being taken seriously, being called a liar. Um, being put through the mill uh, if they have to go to court, all the things that re-traumatize the person. Richie says after trauma, victims' memories become more vivid. They'll um, remember things like smells, aroma, or uh, sounds, and then those things will become associated with uh, fear. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford says her memories were triggered once Judge Brett Kavanaugh was nominated as a justice to the U.S. Supreme Court. With Dr. Ford, she stated that Kavanaugh got on top of her, put his hands over her mouth and nose, and she felt like she was going to suffocate to death. So that was one of the key aspects of the trauma, 
was that sense of being overpowered, helpless, and maybe dying because she couldn't breathe. Richie says trauma can last a lifetime. But in her mind, there's a part of her that's still 15 years old and still up in that bedroom. That has shown that most sexual assaults go unreported to law enforcement. Regardless of what happens next in the Kavanaugh confirmation, these hearings will also leave a lasting mark on the future of the judicial process and the media coverage of it. Reporter Bryce Newberry talked with some experts on the social transformations we are witnessing in real time. Today, Wei Li worked from home. I actually compelled to watch the hearing. Normally, she'd be at Arizona State University's Tempe campus, where she's a professor in the School of Social Transformation. I would like to see um, our country really still stand for justice and for social transform transformation or then could be positive or negative transformation. And as America considers its next U.S. Supreme Court nominee, justice is a top priority. Once a Supreme Court has made a decision on a particular uh, law, that stays with us for years and years and years. And so we have to be very careful about who we put on that Supreme Court. John Kraft is a professor at ASU's Cronkite School of Journalism. Today, students watched intently in the school's First Amendment forum. Kraft was also glued to the televised hearing. A lot of people are watching this type of programming for the dramatic appeal within it. The appeal? Not knowing what happens next. It brings back memories of the Anita Hill hearings for Wei Li. Hill testified in 1991 that then U.S. Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas made repeated advances to her. She worked for him in the U.S. Department of Education. I'm not surprised because our country is so divided. I'm not saying 27 years ago that the country was totally united. The divide is always there. But today's divide is different. I felt the divide is blown to the surface, making it harder for anyone to consider what is fair and what is justice to anyone. In Tempe, Bryce Newberry, Cronkite News. Depend on Cronkite News for full coverage and analysis on what's next for the Kavanaugh nomination. We have our full multimedia reports online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Countrywide pilot shortage is having negative effects on the Air Force. Coming up on Cronkite News, what Arizona's Luke Air Force Base is doing to combat the shortage, next. Plus, new Medicare cards are on their way to hundreds of thousands of Arizonans. What you need to know about new identity theft protections. Join any award-winning CNN anchor Anderson Cooper as he receives the 2018 Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism, attracting industry leaders from the media, politics, business, and education. The award luncheon is the Cronkite School's signature fundraising event. Tickets for the luncheon ceremony on Wednesday, October 17th at the Sheraton Grand in Phoenix are available for sale at cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon or call 602-496-0482. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. The Air Force is currently experiencing a pilot shortage. Here in Arizona, Luke Air Force Base is feeling the effects. Cronkite News reporter Holly Bernstein tells us how various initiatives across the state are playing their part to combat the shortage. Luke Air Force Base is primarily a training base. That means having fewer pilots has a serious impact in terms of being ready for potential missions. Currently, there are only 58 instructor pilots filling out 84 available spots for F-16 fighter jets. 
for the F-35 fighter jets, they only have 85 out of 101 instructor pilots. This has led to high school students coming from all parts of the state to train in different areas impacted by this pilot shortage. Every day at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona, pilots are training to fly F-16 and F-35 fighter jets. And just getting up in the air, that feeling that you get in your stomach. South Mountain High School senior Jaja Obasi says he'd like to follow in their footsteps one day. And then just watching as everything gets smaller and smaller and smaller. For now, he's taking part in his high school's aerospace program. But although Obasi and other student pilots are hoping their aviation careers take off, the Air Force is experiencing a pilot shortage. At Luke Air Force Base, which is mainly a training base, the primary concern is staffing instructor pilots. Air Force officials say that after eight to 10 years, pilots in training often leave, looking for better ways to balance their work and family life. Right now, we don't have enough of certain types of pilots to actually account for all the jobs that we need to do in the Air Force. So those can be anything from here in the front line of actually flying aircraft all the way to kind of the staff jobs that require pilot knowledge as a background to be able to do the job. He also says another cause of the pilot shortage is aircraft availability, with maintenance playing a big role. That's because the number of pilots that can train depends on the number of aircraft available. Two hours away, in Tucson, Arizona, high school students are learning those skills. <laughs> students involved in the Southern Arizona Teen Aviation Program are involved in all parts of building an airplane, including this fuselage. Anybody who's going to fly, if they work on this airplane, will learn all about the intricacies of what makes an airplane go. I mean, I think we're trying to give the kids an opportunity to get their hands on an airplane, see what an airplane's like, fly in an airplane, work with an airplane, build an airplane. Andriata says one way the Air Force is looking to produce more pilots is by increasing efficiency in training. Where we can decrease the course length, but not decrease the quality of the product that we're sending out there. So that's how we produce more. Obasi says he loves aviation because there's lots of experiences you can have within the field. We, we, we need more pilots. It's, it's, it's definitely something that can't be overlooked. It's, it's a fun field. By 2024, Air Force officials say their goal is to have all positions manned at 95 percent. For fighter pilot positions, the year they are looking at is 2029. Holly Bernstein, Cronkite News. Medicare scams are a big problem, especially for seniors. Attorney General Mark Brnovich announced today that more than 1.3 million new Medicare cards are being delivered to Arizonians. To protect against identity theft, these new cards will be the first time Medicare cards will not show a person's social security number. Brnovich and Christy Abrams, the Arizona coordinator for Senior Medicare Patrol, stress some ways people can protect themselves from the most common Medicare scams, which are over the phone. Don't pay for your card. It is free. If anyone calls and says you need to pay for it, that's a scam. Don't give personal information to get your card. If someone calls claiming to be from Medicare, asking for your Social Security number or bank information, that's a scam. Hang up right away. Security numbers, each card will have an 11 digit unique identifier number. While this number can be misused by scammers, it is much harder for them to commit fraud. A new Phoenix based football team is paying tribute with its name, the Hot Shots. Coming up on Cronkite News, how this team plans to live up to the name and honor heroic firefighters. Pretty warm day here in the valley. Stay tuned for what we've got on your forecast after the break. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon, your source for what matters most this election season. Only 
on Arizona PBS. Hot Shots are known as an elite team of firefighters, but now an upstart league hopes the name will also evoke a new football team. The Arizona Hot Shots of the Alliance of American Football League begin to play next year, and Cronkite News reporter Matt Lively spoke to team executives today. 19 Granite Mountain hotshots lost their lives in the Yarnell Hill Fire southwest of Prescott in 2013. The most firefighters to die in a single incident in the United States since 9-11. So the name hotshots has special meaning for Arizonans. Carl Gerke, a planning specialist with the Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management, thinks giving the name hotshots to a football team can help shine a spotlight on those who risk their lives fighting wildfires. I mean, it would be cool if they, uh, you know, offered actual shot crews to come down and you know some of the sidelines or just something like that you know participate in some of the activities that would be that would be neat it's good that they named them after some firefighters you know uh, remember the Yarnell 19 things like that team president Scott Burbaker said that while no partnership exists yet between the hotshot firefighters and the football team he hopes to put something together soon and these guys are kind of the Navy seals of firefighters uh, so over the coming months, we will uh, engage with them and, and, and their support groups, etc., and find ways, uh, the most best and most appropriate ways to partner with them. The Alliance of American Football owns all eight teams in the league. The AAF developed and tested each team's name before informing team executives over the last two weeks. Arizona General Manager Phil Savage said he thinks naming the Arizona franchise the Hot Shots is a great way to honor the firefighting heroes. Bravery, courage, skill, teamwork. I mean, they're all things that carry over from what the real hot shots do versus those that are football hot shot. What an honor and, and what a tribute it is to these 100 uh, elite units of firefighters across the country and then obviously here in Arizona. Cronkite News spoke with fire department chiefs in both Prescott and Yarnell. Prescott Chief Dennis Light said they weren't consulted about the team name, but he said as long as they use hot shots in an honoring and respectful way, he won't take any offense. Yarnell Chief Ben Palm told us that he hopes the team isn't attempting to make profits off the hot shots, but does not directly oppose the name. In the broadcast center, Matt Lively, Cronkite News. It's been another day of triple digit temperatures across southern Arizona. But there are some more fall like temps on the horizon. Micah Bledsoe is tracking the forecast. There are some more triple digit weather uh, temperatures coming up, but soon we will be able to experience lower weather. Currently it's 103 uh, later this week. Starting tomorrow, we can experience high temperatures in Phoenix at 104. Up in Flagstaff, the high is going to be 77. And way out west at Lake Havasu City, it's going to be 105. But let's look at our low temperatures for tomorrow as well. 79 in Phoenix, so it'll be pretty cool. In Flagstaff, 46. And Lake Havasu City, 80. We're going to be tracking Hurricane Rosa as it makes its landfall this coming weekend. Starting tomorrow morning, the winds are going to go up to 140 miles per hour. But as you can see, moving through the rest of the week, those are going to calm down just a little bit, but we're going to get that rainfall here in Arizona. This weekend, it's going to be pretty warm up in the hundreds, but the rest of the week, it's going to go down into the 80s. And we can also expect for our temperatures to be low in the 70s. In the Breast Cancer Awareness Month starts next week on October 1st. Coming up on Cronkite News how these breast cancer survivors bond while paddling their way to victory. I'm Matt Berry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. Here at Cronkite News, we have producers who craft shows that make an impact on our community. Our broadcasts allow students to be involved in all levels of production, from producing to directing. We are guided by highly respected professionals who mentor the journalists of tomorrow. From technical directing to teleprompting and beyond, our production crew works tirelessly to produce meaningful and award-winning shows. We are Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. Voting team, all connected by more than just their sport. 
Cronkite News reporter Ethan Gaines went out to the water to follow the team as they prepare for their next big race. Ten. The Phoenix Desert Dragons are a unique group in an even more unique sport. They are an all-female group of breast cancer survivors who compete in dragon boating, a sport similar to kayaking but with a larger boat. Dragon boating has been popular among breast cancer survivors since 1998 when Canadian doctor Don McKenzie published a paper on the physical benefits of dragon boating as both a cardio and an upper body workout. Specifically for breast cancer survivors like Desert Dragons coach Melissa Adams. Physically, we know that it decreases the chance of lymphedema. Dr. McKenzie from Canada had done a research study that showed that doing dragon boating will help women that have lymphedema. And that is very common for breast cancer survivors when they've had lymph nodes removed as a result of part of their treatment. Melissa said that dragon boating doesn't just help the women with their physical health, but their mental health as well. We think of dragon boating as being an on the water support group. There's just a lot of power in being able to surround yourself with these women who have experienced something so horrific in their lives. It's really just a place for them to belong without having to talk about breast cancer. Laura Rasmussen has been with the Desert Dragons for several years now and has experienced a lot of success with the team despite entering the sport without much athletic experience. Winning medals at my age is a, an amazing experience. Everything about the competition, the racing, the practices, it's all about the team, it's not about me. In October, the Desert Dragons will compete at the Rose Regatta Festival in Las Vegas. In Tempe, Ethan Gaines, Go. Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Arizona Arizona Horizon is next, and here's what's ahead on the PBS NewsHour. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next NewsHour. It is hearing day. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and the first woman to accuse him of sexual assault testify in front of senators. That's Thursday on the PBS NewsHour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.
Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Arizona Highways Magazine is for people who strive to enjoy and are inspired by Arizona's unique outdoor experience, rich history, and diverse culture. Subscription information at ArizonaHighways.com slash PBS. Like you, we get up and go to work every day. We're on the job, keeping you connected at home, at work, and to what matters most. Others count on you, so you can count on us. We're here restoring power quickly when storms hit, even fixing issues before they happen. We're making solar more. And by APS, working 24-7 to keep Arizona on. And by the contributions from the friends of eight, members of your